No one show late night. We return nothing but illustrious guests. Miro, who do we got in the building? Oh, man. I had to come back for the rotor for this one. Ladies and gentlemen, needs no introduction, but we're going to give him one anyway. Glenn mm -hmm. Close is in the house right now. It's not a game. It's not virtual. It's not a deep fake. She's really here. <laughs> it's really her. It's really her. We have not been catfished. We checked it out. This is the real legend. Glenn Close in the building. Glenn Close, how is it going today? Oh, it's going great, you guys. How's New York? New York okay. is good. It's, you know, it's real, get, get bouncing back. We're bouncing yeah. back. That is. We are bouncing yes. back. We're getting, vac getting vaccinated. You know, we are uh, yeah. hopefully getting back out in the streets. How are you doing? How, are you, how have you been surviving the pandemic? Well, I, you know, it's amazing. I came out here uh, just before the, the, the December before it hit. And um, mm -hmm. my last time I was in New York was was last was a year ago. Oh, so wow. I can't wait to come back. I've been vaccinated. And uh, so I'll be coming back um, in the spring. I hope I, I miss it terribly. Right now you're in Montana, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. It was snowing how, this morning. <laughs> how was it? How is it in Montana? Because we, you know, we're, listen, for us going to like Philadelphia is traveling to a foreign country because we're New York <laughs> born and bred. What's it like in Montana? How was it during the pandemic? Well, not, I mean, it was amazing to have this, the country that's here, the, the mountains mm -hmm. and the nature. And um, you could, I could go out of town and in, in 20, you know, 15 minutes, you're in a place that, you can imagine there are no humans around. So uh, right. I found it incredibly um, feeding, you know, to my soul, yeah. my psyche. Yeah. So I was that. very yeah. lucky. Yeah, very lucky. That's good yeah, because, you know, being in New York, you have that paranoia, you know, anything. You know, I just touched the subway pole. Oh, no. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, you know, yeah. I, you just lay by a creek, you know, fly fishing and shit, like just chilling. You know? <laughs> yeah, I did fish. <laughs> I did fish last, last summer. On the Madison and yeah, and the Yellowstone, great rivers that go through here. What fish? What fish are out there? What What's the uh, catch of choice out in Montana? Trout. Okay. Big trout. Yeah. Trout. Right trout. Okay. Yeah. Rainbow <laughs> trout. Rainbow. Uh, cutthroat trout. Cutthroat is probably the 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 oldest, uh, the the most the indigenous um, the species. But yeah, you. trout. Got you. Listen, you are a Hall of Famer. You are literally in the Hall of Fame of theater. You started in theater, and you're out here in the world. You're doing a lot of things. You've done TV, movies, everything that there is to do. What is something that gives you, like you said, feeds your soul? Yeah. In acting. Oh, man, silence. <laughs> silence <laughs> feeds my soul because our world is so full of noise. And uh, hmm. so I seek silence. And that's another thing that's it's wonderful to be in a place where you can't you you can hear the the wind in the trees and your 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 foot crackling on the earth and hmm. uh, silence. I think a great book <laughs> feeds my yeah. soul. My work feeds my soul. If if I'm with a group of people and we're all collaborating, as only my profession does, uh, to tell a great story, that feeds my soul. You know, the process feeds my soul. Nice. You know, while we we spoke to Eddie Murphy, and, and it seems like the 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 OGs, the legends in the game, enjoy tranquility more than anything else. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They don't want to load up twenty eight thousand projects. They want to. Relax and, like you said, work with other artists and, and create something. Yeah, I think. I mean, I'm I I'm an introvert. I I always felt guilty about that, but I don't anymore. I you know I've been an introvert since I was a little little girl, and mm -hmm. there's so many of my fellow actors and and people that I've collaborated with over the years that I would say that they're introverts as well. I think Robin Williams was an introvert, truly. Mm. Um, oh, gee. Because, yeah, you can't. You have to. You have to reboot. You have to be able to kind of um, go back into yourself to to fill yourself up again. Um, and yeah. uh, so yeah. I think I think we are a species of introverts more Definitely. often than not. Now, listen, you are a legend in so many different ways, but especially the stuff you've done on Broadway and you've seen the pandemic. It shut down Broadway in New York City. We're trying to get it back. Yeah. Have you been in contact with like uh, fellow actors and actresses? Do you have any like idea like the temperature of what it's looking like if it's going to come back as normal or like we're we're even at with that? Because I know I have yeah. friends that work in sound and stage, and I know like it was really unfair. Like they couldn't work, and now we're kind of getting back out there, but they haven't been out there in so long. And like, are we going to be able to get Broadway back to the way it was before the pandemic? Or 
I think that will will take a while. I've been doing things with with the Broadway community since the since the lockdown, mm-hmm. and um, did this incredible thing for Amfar, um, where um, we were all in different places, but they could put us in a looking like we were in the same room together and actually acting right. with each other. So that was a new experience, and God, it was, it was like water on the desert to even do that. You know, right. I, I think that what people don't realize is that, you know, the people that you see on stage is just a very small percentage of what that incredible community is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, talk the, about the, it. Yeah. The crews, the costume people, the everybody, the, the everybody, you know, the um, so stage hands, everything. Stage hands, Union everybody. Guys, everybody been hurting. So yeah. I can't wait to get back. I can't wait to get back. And, um, I know there's been some pop-up things that have been going around the mm-hmm. city. I think they've done one, right? So yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's, you can't stop New York, but you know, you, you know, yeah. You know, <laughs> no, you, man, you, we're, you, we're we're going to be jumping out of our skin in order to <laughs> oh, get, yeah. back in the, get back in the groove with all that. Yeah. Listen, we're doing great with the vaccination numbers. The city wants to get back on its feet. Uh, we're yep. gonna we're gonna be back there soon. We're uh, like cautiously optimistic. We're taking our time. Speaking of cautious optimism, you. Are a Mets fan? Yes, this is correct. <laughs> yes, listen, and I respect it because you are a Mets fan from back when the Mets were in Shea Stadium. Okay, That's the real right. Mets fan. Okay, That's right. So to sang you. The, I sang the anthem sang twice. Mets to anthem. when they won Nothing the but respect. Uh, yeah. Listen, listen, that is big Mets energy. What's it looking like? How are you feeling this year? You got the new owner for the Mets. Are you, are you optimistic? You, well, are, I, are you all in? How can you be a Mets fan and not be optimistic? You know, optimistic right. has to be your middle name to be a Mets right. fan. Now, number one, you have to be a great baseball lover, which I am mm-hmm. because I think baseball is like jazz. You know, you, all these names, be only only really experience them when you see them play. You know, mm-hmm. uh, yep. and um, and then and then the Mets. You know, um, I think I think the Mets actually are a great metaphor for New York. You know, we will come back. We will come back. We will come back. Yeah. It'll be a team effort. Listen, yeah. it's it's the blue and the orange, the Knicks and the Mets. It's all yeah. about it's all about long suffering <laughs> and waiting Optimism. and getting to the end. It's not about the it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. We're gonna get there. No okay? fucking kidding. Okay, listen, <laughs> it'll uh, happen. <laughs> it's gonna what, happen. What is, what, I have what this. You... I have this theory that when you're born, there's a big there's a big net up in space with all these different sized rocks in it, and as uh-huh. you go through life, it you know, different sized rocks ping you in the head. And some right. of them just kind of stun you. Some of them, some of them make you stagger. Some of them leave you flat out on the ground. And the, mm-hmm. of course, you know, it's how you get up because the rocks are coming. They're coming. <laughs> They're not going to stop. So you got to be able to face stuff. Glenn, what do you do to relax? <sighs> uh, go out into nature. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're big, big nature, big nature, or like, like super roughing it, like bare grill status, or like take a <laughs> take a camper out and go no, back in the camper at night. No, I don't go in a camper. I have I have a wonderful piece of property here that doesn't have anything but nature on it. And uh, I literally last last year um, I would lie down face down on the ground and spread eagle and just imagine that the earth was holding me up. And um, I've that's one of the ways I really. Um, <laughs> If anyone else said that, I'd be like, yo, 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 shut up. What are you talking yo, about? Yo, I was you picture. But you said <laughs> it. You yo. said it. I'm about to try it after this. I'm like, yo, let's go. Listen, let's go. I did that. I did that one time in my, because I, I moved to Jersey. I relocated because I needed more space for my kids to run around. And I had a yard for the first time in my life. And I literally laid down in the grass in the sun and spread eagle doing the same thing. But I yeah. ate an edible before I did that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Which, That's speaking of that, weed is legal in New York now, and you're about to come back to New York after two summers of people being indoors and legal weed. So oh, you, you're about to come back at the perfect time. <laughs> no kidding. It, it's, uh, I, they just passed that here. Um, mm-hmm. But my sister, Jess, um, who lives with bipolar disorder, she already has, you know, she can get it. So, the better uh, than her, right? you know, every now and then, I have to say, go in and have a few puffs with her, and it's really hey. great. It takes nature from here to here. You know what I mean? Yes. 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 It puts you in touch. All right. Yeah. It puts you in touch. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I have to ask you 
ask you the worst question everyone probably asks you. Do you have a favorite role that you've done? Which is, I know that's a hard question to ask. It's like asking musicians if they have a favorite yeah. song. But is it? Is there anyone that- And people that's... usually answer that because it's really hard. I mean, for me, every, every role has, ex it, it represents a different experience in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and even the bad ones turn out to be not bad because that's when you usually learn the most. Right. Um, my favorite role. Oh, geez. Um, I don't know. In some ways, it was Albert Knobs um, mm -hmm. that I don't know if you've seen it, um, but I did it early on stage early in my career. A woman who is that the one in Dublin. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. She's surviving yeah. by disguising herself as a as a butler. Um, mm -hmm. So she's an invisible person. And uh, I really think that there are a lot of people in the world who are invisible. Uh, but every single one of them has a story worth hearing. And so that's that that story really meant a lot to me. And when we finally were able to make the movie, that was mm -hmm. something I was I, I'm very proud of. That's good to hear. That's, that's dope. Hear. That's dope. Uh, yo, wow, you just blew my mind. I, like I had a question on deck and I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> but <laughs> like you're an actor's actor, like you, you take your craft seriously. It, what is there to acting? I mean, like, because, you know, some people some people say, like, I'm a natural. Like, I just started doing this. Some people are like, I tr I, I'm i highly trained. Or what do you think makes a great actor? I think, and this is from my very subjective point of view, that a great actor is able to make people feel what they're feeling and go through whatever story or experience they are experiencing as an actor and that means that you have to have an authentic connection to the where the humanity is in the character you're playing so that you can empathize and not judge. And, and I think um, anybody seeing a story, uh, however it is on stage or television or movies, they want to feel something, you know, we want connection, we want emotion. And I think a great actor um, creates that connection and puts their audiences through an experience that hopefully they won't forget. Being at the level of just excellence that you're at, you know, are you able to watch trash TV and enjoy it? No. No? I don't watch TV very often. I mean, of course, mm -hmm. now, now that you, there's so much, mm -hmm. um, and my sister's lives just across the yard. So we watched, we watched some, we've watched, been watching series together. And mm -hmm. during the during the uh, award season, you can get I've been able to get into the Academy screening room and I've seen all the pictures that have been up for nominations. So that was really that was really great. But I, I do not um, I can't watch reality television and gotcha. I I really don't spend a lot of time watching watching TV. As a seasoned veteran, what advice do you have for us about just not navigating Hollywood and Broadway and fame and success and just you guys being don't legendary? Need you don't need advice. There's something new. You're 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 going into new territory. So the last thing you need is is advice. Just go with your heart, man. And you have oh. an incredible you have an incredible chemistry together, mm -hmm. and that's the, when everybody loves it. And you know you're like a fucking breath of fresh air. So yeah, <laughs> you don't need advice. <laughs> that's high praise. That is high praise right yeah. there. Oh man, yo, that's great. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, wow. Glenn Close, what more needs to be said? You know what no. I'm saying? Like, exactly. Come on now. Exactly. Listen, I'm, <laughs> see, oh, I'm not, if I still have to do a resume, this would be my opening statement. I'd be like, endorsed by Glenn Close. What else you want? <laughs> <laughs> huh? well, put nah. it on your resume, because it's Put true. it on my resume. <laughs> I'm, I'm walking into, next time we go to one of these uh, script meetings, we're coming in very cocky. I'm like, well, Glenn Close likes the show, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You know. Yeah, well, I'm really honored to be on it and to meet you guys. And maybe someday we'll do a pop up. And you, you know, oh, are you going to do one of those things? Uh, oh, listen. yes, definitely. You know, you know what? Us and you, us and you. When you come back to New York, we're going to set something up. Everyone will enjoy it. It's going to be oh, fantastic. That would be great. That would be That'd great. Be fantastic. Yeah. Oh, we can. We, we, we could go enjoy nature in Montana. Oh yeah. True. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you can oh, lie oh. on your stomach you know and uh, yeah, smell the oh. beer, the bear poop. No. <laughs> listen. <laughs> Feel true. Feel true. Listen, Let's go. <laughs> Glenn, thank you for coming on the show. We have nothing but illustrious guests. Everyone that comes on our show gets a neon sign reminiscent of a New York bodega. Your neon sign can say a saying, a phrase, whatever you want it to say. What would you like your neon sign to say? I think I would like my neon sign to say, if no one else has taken it, believe. 
believe. Pow! Simple to the Spoke point. Of, spoke like a true Mets fan. Like a true, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> the amazing Glenn Close in the building. Thank you so much. Uh, Let's thank go. Thank you. Thank you. Love you guys. <laughs> Enjoy Montana. We love you yeah. too. Welcome to the Jesus and Mero YouTube channel. That's right, you know what I'm saying? Like, subscribe, you know what I mean? That's right, we got a lot of digital content right here to keep you up in between our shows. So be sure to like, subscribe, and you know, click watch another video. We out. Yo,